Well, welcome again. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. This is Spotlight. I'm Pastor Dan. And uh, if you've been with us the last few days that we do Spotlight, you know that we're talking about end things. Maybe it's uncomfortable for you, but we have to talk about them. What, what will happen? And of course, we have to uh, wrestle with the one hard, really hard question. Is it true that God is basically saying is that if you don't follow my rules, if you resist me, reject me, ignore me in any way, then I'm going to well, I'm going to put you in a, in a lake of fire. And in that fire, you are going to suffer, and there will be no relief. There will be no place to go and rest, and you will be tortured by fire every day, forever. Virtually every religion in the world has some version of that. And virtually every Christian church officially believes that. Someone put it in the simplest form, love me or I'll kill you. <laughs> Is that the best we can do? Is that really what we believe in a very literal sense? God the Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit will stand next to a literal fire, lake of fire, and take every human being that resists them, rejects them, sins in some way against them, and doesn't accept their one pathway into heaven, and they pick them up and cast them into a lake of fire where they will scream in pain and the smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever. Jesus says, I've called you friends. How do we put this together? God is a God of love. It's difficult. I ask people sometimes, how, how long do you think you could stand it in the fire? Could you make it a year? You know, It's not very long, an eternity. Could you, could you, could you make it a, a month? Could you make it a week? Could you make it a day? Could you make it for 10 seconds? Fire is the worst. Fire is the absolute worst. At the top of 9-11, when those people were at the 100th floor where the fire was 1,500 degrees, when people knew that there was no way they were going to get out, they decided they would rather take a chair and smash the window and jump 100 floors down and land on the cement than to die a few seconds in a fire like that. 200 jumps. God is like that? Simon Wiesenthal told a story and called a sunflower how when he was in the prison camp, in the German camps as a Jew, they took him to a man who was 21 years old, covered in bandages. And this German soldier said, I'm going to die tonight. I've been work fighting on the Eastern Front. We've been killing Jews. We light the house on fire, and then when the family comes to the window and jumps to be safe, we machine gun them all to death. I can't get their screams out of my mind. Would you forgive me for what I did before I die? Simon Wiesenthal would not forgive. He said, how do you forgive that? Well, how do you forgive God? If God puts 100 billion of his children into a lake of fire forever, not for a few seconds, put them out of their misery, but keeps them alive so they can be tortured some more to pay for their sin of rejecting him or some other sin that they did. It's not easy. It's not easy. I read Merv Griffin's autobiography. He used to have a TV show, and he had a TV show. He would take it to Las Vegas once in a while. He saw this man that had a booth with a little window and had a chicken that would dance to music. You put your money in, and the music would play, and the chicken would dance. He said, that's very good. Come, we'll put you on TV. The man came, and he uh, said, you got a plug-in? He said, yeah, what, what do you need a plug-in for? He said, for my hot plate. He said, what do you need a hot plate for? He said, 
What do you think makes the chicken dance? He turned him in for the Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Even Las Vegas can tell you can't do that to a chicken, a chicken. But yet most Christians believe that God does that to his own children who reject him. Don't follow all the rules. Color outside the lines one day. And I, at least for one, have to say I can't. I just can't accept that God is like that. God is a God of love. He said, thieves destroy, steal, and take life. I don't come to take life. I came to give you life. He's a life giver. I'll die for that. You believe whatever you wish. But this is spotlight, and here at spotlight, we want to stand before the world and say, God is love, and he doesn't do that. The wicked may very well suffer in some way, but they don't suffer like that at the hands of a loving and kind and gracious God. God is good all the time. This is Spotlight. Thank you for watching Spotlight. We're so excited about this. We hope that you'll subscribe and so you'll get all of them. And please just forward it on to others and tell other people about it. And let's just see what kind of an audience we can get for these messages of Spotlight. God bless you.